Hi, welcome to the studio at Wardley. Uh, my name is Stuart Hamlin and I'm a Feldenkrais teacher. In today's lesson, we're going to be doing a lesson that's mostly done lying on the side. Um, it's one of my favourite Feldenkrais lessons and it's all about helping to reorganise this area, the area of the neck and shoulders. In today's Feldenkrais lesson, we're going to be looking at a lesson that I think is particularly good for the area of the neck and shoulders, though it also um, helps with the back too if you've been feeling a, a bit stiff there. I'm going to do the lesson with you and I'm going to ask you to begin, if you're doing it along with me, by lying down on your mat or the floor. Um, it's a bit cold in England at the moment today, and the nice thing about the studio at Wardley, which is the only reason I'm doing this lesson in shorts, is because the floor is has got underfloor heating, so I'm very, very lucky indeed. Um, so take a just take a moment as you're lying here, um, just to sort of scan scan yourself. That's often how we begin the film film Christ lessons, the awareness through movement lessons, and the purpose of this scan is just to give you a few things to think about, really, um, uh, that you can come back to at the end of the lesson to see whether anything has changed. So one place that's really good to start with is just um, getting an impression of how much of yourself is actually making contact into the floor. And then um, once you've done that, just notice a, f um, a few points of detail. Now, um, for me, uh, I often start with the feet and noticing where my toes are pointing. So um, for you, it might be the case that the toes are pointing more towards the ceiling. It might be the case that one foot is slightly more turned out than the other. Um, uh, and the, the purpose of these questions is not to correct anything, but as I say, just to begin to notice or pay, pay attention to how, how it is that you're resting. And then notice um, whether your calves make contact with the floor, the backs of the knees, the backs of the thighs. For some people, for lots of different reasons, the thighs might be, uh, there might be some disc space between the backs of the thighs and the floor. Um, and again, there might be a difference between terms of how the, um, the right leg is resting or, or, um, compared to the left. And then uh, it's always interesting to ask, I think it's interesting, hopefully you, you will do too, how the pelvis is resting. So um, again, for some people, um, the one side of the pelvis may be much more resting into the floor than the other. Um, for me, I often have the sensation that my left side is slightly more weighted into the floor. And that's partly because I had um, an injury to my um, right foot which meant I spent a lot of um, time trying to avoid bearing weight down into the foot. Um, and then also it might be, might be that you're more, you, you feel the weight more to the, where the waist is, would be, or where the, a belt would be if you were wearing one. Um, or it might be the case that the pelvis, you're resting more of the pelvis towards the tip of the tailbone or the coccyx, um, uh, which would mean that you've probably got more of an arch in the lower back area as you're resting here. So um, again, just to begin to notice these things, and then also think about the area we're considering particularly today, the shoulders. So um, are your shoulders uh, um, away from the floor or are they in fact resting down into the floor? Is there a difference in, in terms of the two shoulders? So one shoulder might well be um, uh, more away from the floor than the other, and another shoulder, you might get a sensation as you're lying here, is actually higher on the floor com compared to the other. And then um, think about where you're resting in terms of the back of the head, so where on the back of the head are you resting. Again, it might be if you're not using any support that um, the chin is kind of pointing up towards the ceiling, meaning you're looking more at the ceiling behind you. Um, and um, uh, so uh, again, just begin to pay attention to these things uh, to give it to give us something to look at at the um, end of the lesson. And then just notice how you've chosen to place the arms. Are your palms up? Are they down? Are the arms wide away? Are they bent? For some people, it might 
might be the case that just the very little of the arm is actually in contact. If the shoulders are up, the elbows down, tips of the elbows and the tips of the fingers, that's um, qu quite often what I see in, in lessons. Um, so you can just notice how, how it is that you're organised. And then um, just very gently, very gently, um, roll the head a little bit to the one side and then to the other. Um, and I really do mean gently. It's um, In Feldenkrais, the nice thing about the Feldenkrais method is that you're really encouraged just to do what's very easy. And you might, you might notice as you're rolling the head that, you know, there's a sticky point to one side compared to the other. Uh, or, or you may even get a sense that the head is actually turning in a different way towards one side compared to, to the other. Even if you can't precisely define the difference, again, it's just whatever you feel, you feel as you're just rolling the head. And then once, once you've um, sort of scanned yourself, then bring the knees to standing, and then um, please come to lie. Um, so I'm lying on my left hand side, and um, with your knees sort of more or less on, on top of each other, and the feet on top of each other. And now, if I um, don't have any support, my head's going to hang. Um, so uh, I'm going to take a few pillows just to support the head as I'm as I'm resting here. And um, if you need support, then please do take it. The important thing is that there shouldn't be any sense of strain in these neck muscles. Equally, if it's too high, um, again, you might that might restrict the movement. So just enough support to make yourself feel comfortable here. And then please have your two arms in front of you, like that. So one, one hand, my right hand is resting on my left hand. And then just begin to do a movement of just sliding your top arm forward a little bit and then back. So you just gently, uh, um, just trying to, to um, uh, stroke the floor in front of the left hand and then come back. And so in these Feldenkrais lessons, you, you repeat the movements, um, if possible, um, but not going into pain. So if anything causes you discomfort, don't go there effectively. Um, you always sort of stay within an easy, pain-free range of motion. And then once you've got used to this um, movement, just see if you can notice where it is that the movement is coming, coming from. Uh, and by that I mean, so um, can you sense how your shoulder blade, the shoulder blade, the right shoulder blade can glide forward um, to help bring the ar arm forward? The um, shoulder blade just sort of releases away from the spine and then it come back. Now that's what I'm feeling, but for other people it might in fact be they're not sensing anything in terms of the shoulder blade. What's really happening is that the shoulder blade is very um, stuck and what's happening is they're moving the chest to, to move the arm without any movement of the shoulder blade relative to the ribs. And, and that's fine too. The important thing is just to begin to pay attention and notice what it is you're doing. And then if it is the case that your ribs are doing all the movement, see if you can sort of just inhibit the movement of the ribs and see if you can just sense how the shoulder blade can move away um, from the from the spine, and then um, if it's the case that you you are doing it just from the shoulder blades, then think letting as the arm slides forward. What would happen if you were to let the ribs also participate, and then and then come back? So just gently reaching the arm forward, and then coming back, and then pause. And then this time, begin to slide the right arm backwards a little bit and then come back to the starting position. So you're just taking the arm backwards and then um, bring it back to the starting position. And try, try and keep this arm straight as you're bringing it back. So not, not locked, but just long and straight. You see, what happens often is that people begin to bend the arm 
which effectively means that they're using muscles in the arm, say their, their biceps, to do the movement of bringing the, bringing the arm back. But if you keep the arm straight, you, again, you may begin to feel how actually this time the shoulder blade, or the scapula, um, the, sh the shoulder blade is just sort of moving backwards towards the spine. Um, and again, um, uh, for some people, in fact, there might not be any movement of the scapula. What they're doing is rolling the chest. So just begin to notice, if you can, what it is that you're doing. And then um, see if you kept the chest quite still, can you sort of differentiate that movement of the shoulder blade? And if it is the case that you're moving the shoulder blade, then try letting the chest move a little bit too. So um, once you've done that a few times, then um, begin to combine these two directions so that you're just sliding the top arm forward and then sliding the top arm back in, just going forward and backwards forward and backwards. See if you can feel this this movement of the shoulder blade relative to the ribs and the and the spine. And then if you have got comfortable with that movement then you can begin to think of allowing it to go a little bit further and then a little bit back. And you'll notice that my head and eyes are beginning to my head's beginning to roll a little bit forward as the arm reaches forward and the head is going, beginning to roll a little bit back as the, as the arm and the shoulder come back. See if you can allow that also to happen. Good. And then um, pause, just take a rest for a moment. Uh, okay, another great thing about the Feldenkrais method is that there are a lot of rests in the lesson. Um, I'm not because we're filming, obviously, I'm not going to give a lot of time for that. But if you need to take longer rests, then just press pause and and um, start the video, the recording when you're when you're ready. Um, so once you have rested, then this time, um, begin to um, just lift the top arm away from the bottom one. And by lifting, I did uh, just a small lift to begin with, just a couple of inches or cent centimetres, and just get a sense of kind of the weight of the arm. Does your arm feel heavy or, um, or does it feel light? Just get a, a sense of where it is that, um, of, of the weight of the arm. And then um, the next time you lift the arm, think of just drawing the shoulder blade back a little bit first. So you sort of draw it back and then begin to lift the arm. So you're drawing the shoulder back, beginning to lift the arm. And then you can begin to lift the arm a bit higher and then bring it back down again. So you shoulder back and you're just, just dropping back slightly and then you extend the arm towards the ceiling. And notice as you're lifting the arm, are you keeping the head and eyes sort of very fixed? And if that is the case, could you begin to allow the head and eyes to sort of follow the arm as it goes towards the ceiling? And a few times like this. So, and, and notice how are you breathing to do this. So, one way, of course, is to hold the breath, which I don't recommend. That means the chest will pro often be a bit stiffer. See if you can allow yourself to sort of breathe naturally as you take the arm up towards the ceiling, following with the head and eyes. And then also um, notice uh, the arm. Uh, are you sort of really stiffening through the hand or the forearm? So um, if that is the case, could you maybe just allow the arm to be long, but still soft? So I often tell my students, yeah, imagining, imagine you're holding a, a baby's hand um, at all times. Uh, so you keep a soft quality, quality even though the arm is long. So I'm not trying to really stretch the arm up, I'm just having it long, keeping it as soft as possible, the hand as soft as possible, and then beginning to take the arm towards the ceiling. And you'll notice as the arm uh, goes to the ceiling, uh, how the ribs and the chest begin to turn a little bit as well. 
Can you feel that? That uh, how, if you pay attention to the weight underneath the bottom ribs, how it's beginning to roll the weight a little bit backwards, and then you come back. Now, um, just um, as you continue this movement to the arm, just notice what, again, another thing about the shoulder. So, for some people, they get into a very habitual action of pulling the shoulder up to the ear as they begin to um, lift the arm. See if you can allow this area, again, to be as soft as possible. So, you're just gently taking the arm up and then coming back. Just towards the ceiling. Uh, you might be tempted to take it a bit further, but just for the moment, keep it looking, um, reaching up towards the ceiling, and then bringing it back down. Good. And then um, pause for a moment, and then this time, bring your top hand, the, so for me it's the right hand, onto your forehead. So the, my fingers are pointing towards the crown of my head, the top of my head, and the palm is glued to my forehead. Um, and I'm looking at the crook of my elbow, or the bend in my elbow, and I imagine this hand is glued, and I'm going to try to keep this relationship the same, the elbow, the hand, to the nose and the mouth, and then begin to take the, the, this complex, this hand, the elbow, and the head, turning that towards the ceiling, and then come back. Again, just check that you're not holding the breath, that everything is, you know, sort of normal, restful breathing. The jaw is nice and relaxed, you're not clenching there. And the great thing about this hand position is that it keeps the head and the shoulders fixed in a certain relationship. And, and what that means, therefore, is that you can probably sense how there's more movement coming down the spine. The spine, more, more of this movement is produced further down the spine. Yeah. And then as you get more comfortable with this movement, you can begin to allow the movement to, to develop into something bigger. So you can begin to think of the elbow turning a little bit further behind you and then coming back. Just a few more. It feels for me, it feels great to to do this, and uh, it's kind of interesting, I think. So, if you think about the line of your spine, the line of your spine here, going down my back like a pole, it's as if as I do this movement, my shoulder is travelling in an arc around the line of the spine. So the shoulder is beginning to go closer to the floor behind me as I take the arm up, and then it's coming closer to the floor in front of me. It's sort of doing a little half a circle um, around my spine, that, that movement. I can begin to feel how the shoulder is coming closer to the floor behind me, and then when I come back, it's coming close to the floor in front of me. And you can see probably that more of my chest is beginning to beginning to turn too. And then come back. Now once you've done that a few times, bring the right hand back onto the left hand. And then again, just think of um, drawing the arm back slightly, so from the shoulder almost as if you connect the shoulder blade into the, plugging it into the spine a little bit, and then begin to take the arm up towards the ceiling, and then come back. And think about that movement of the shoulder blade. So instead of initiating the movement from the hand, I'm really thinking of that coming from the shoulder. I'm still thinking of the path of the shoulder as it goes behind me and then I sort of reach up and then bring the hands back together again. So again, I think just drawing the arm backwards and I think again shoulder, that's it, how the shoulder begins to move around the spine, around the spine and then come back up. Now, 
and maybe you're not going to get you don't get as far as that um, and that's fine you just do what you can comfortably do and then come back um, and another thing is as you're following the hand with the head and eyes always keep the, the hand in your easy view you see sometimes what happens is you people get to here and then because uh, there's not much turning in the chest, what happens is they drop the arm behind them, which means actually you're putting quite a lot of pressure into the shoulder joint. So um, if you keep in mind that relationship of the arm to the shoulder, hopefully that, that won't, won't happen. So um, I'm thinking as the arm goes, if it, the movement really coming from my centre, from the shoulder, as I take the hand further, and then reach back up and then bring the hand back together so the, the movement is really coming from your middle and there's no need to go all the way to the floor you just go to where you comfortably can and then come back up now just one more time with this movement and, and notice what's happening here in the pelvis so are you keeping that very stiff? Um, are you finding the knee wanting to lift? Just notice what it is is happening and then come back. Good. And now pause and um, again if you need to rest then uh, please feel free to do so. Uh, you can always stop the recording. But if possible now, um, keep the hands as they are, sort of in front of you, and bring your attention to your top knee this knee and just do a move like we did with the arm of just reaching the knee a little bit forward and back to its starting position so just reaching it forward and then back to its starting position uh, forward and back try not to lift the knee to do this so try and keep it down um, and, and so you're just sliding the knee forward and then bring it back so keep the feet together as well if you can so don't shift the foot forward and um, what happens sometimes is people straighten the leg to do this so again just notice what you are doing and then just see if you can allow the knee to slide a little bit forward and um, you'll quickly begin to realize um, that although the kind of the instructions given in terms of the knee Actually, what's bringing the knee forward is the movement of the pelvis. And, and of course, when the pelvis gets involved, then the spine follows, or it usually follows. And can you begin to notice sort of how far up the spine do you sense this movement happening? Can you, can you sense the, which vertebrae are involved to bring the knee forward? And back. Now pause and then this time take the knee backwards a little bit. So you're just sliding it a little bit backwards and then bringing it back to the starting position. So back and back to the starting position and then once you've got used to that move, again keeping the feet together, could you begin to slide the knee a little bit forward and backwards. And as you just continue to do that, um, because the hands are being kept in this position, I'm not sliding the arm yet, because <laughs> uh, the hands are being kept in this position, it means that you're beginning to differentiate, gain, um, separate, for, in another word, the movement of the pelvis from the chest. As um, people get older and a bit stiffer, Often everything sort of moves as a block. So if you're finding that happen, just um, slow it down. Uh, if you really go you know, as slow as you need to, to think, can you just slide the knee a little bit forward and a little bit backwards uh, and, get, and reducing any unnecessary effort. So check again that your jaw is soft, the eyes are soft, you're not holding the, the breath. And now pause and then uh, begin to slide the arm and the knee a little bit forward 
together and then a little bit back together. So you're um, sliding the knee a little bit forward and the arm a little bit forward and then the knee and the arm back together. And again, just notice what are you doing with the head? Are you keeping it very fixed or are you allowing the head just to be, the neck to be soft? so that uh, the head respond, the head and eyes respond to the movement. So you can see my head is turning a little bit towards the ceiling as the knee and the arm come back and then the head is just sliding a little bit or rolling a little bit towards the floor as the knee and the arm come forward. And then um, pause, just again just take a rest for a moment and then um, return to the movement of sliding the knee and the arm forward and okay, notice where are you, um, what are you thinking of, what are you, where are you initiating this movement? Are you just thinking of the arm and the knee? What would happen if you were to think of letting the movement come from your centre? So I'm not holding the belly in, I'm allowing the, my belly and my ribs and my chest to slide the arm and the knee forward and I'm thinking of that area moving back, pouring backwards to bring the arm and the knee back. So I'm thinking of the movement really coming from my centre, centre rather than kind of just thinking of the hand and the knee, forward and backwards. Good. Now pause, <laughs> this time, um, think of as the arm goes forward, the knee goes back. And then as the knee goes forward, the arm goes back. So arm can go forward as the knee goes back. And then as the knee goes forward, the arm goes back. And you can let the head do whatever it wants to. So uh, again, what you, what may, you may find out is suddenly you're tensing in the head at the, at the movement, but as the arm goes forward, the knee goes back, and as the knee goes forward, the arm comes back. And see if you can just keep that going in a nice, slow rhythm, so that what happens is as the shoulder comes back, the pelvis rolls a little bit forward, or the hip rolls a little bit forward, as the hip or pelvis go back, the shoulder comes a little bit forward, so effectively there's a little bit of a twist or a counter rotation going on in the spine. And don't, don't worry if you find yourself really confused by this movement. Again, when I teach this in class, um, it's almost like people are sort of rabbits stuck in headlights. So, and that's fine, that's part of the learning. Um, you know, they, suddenly all sorts of things happen with the knee and the arm, and it all, it all gets a little bit confused. So um, take the time, slow it down, and again, just see if you can find your own rhythm of alternating the knee and the arm going in the opposite direction, opposite direction. If you think about it, the, that movement is very much, or ju just take a rest for a moment, that movement of the shoulder moving in um, counter rotation to the pelvis is very much what we do in walking. Uh, so, come back to lying on your, on your side and um, go back to the easier version so that as the arm, and, arm goes forward, the knee goes forward and as the arm comes back, the knee comes back. Just gently taking them forward and backwards. And then pause and then have another go at the alternate movement. So, knee back, arm forward, arm forward, arm back. And again, slow it down if you need to, just till you master, master will get more acquainted with this variation. Good. Now pause, and then from here, um, begin to take the arm up towards the scene again. So first of all, you draw it back slightly, you take the arm up, being careful you're not uh, dropping the arm behind you, keep that sense of the shoulder moving around the spine. And then just notice where is it that you sort of feel the movement stop 
and then think what would happen if you were to allow the knee to slide back a little bit does it enable you to does it enable you to turn a bit further to open the chest and for me you can see it definitely definitely does and then to come back i can think of the pelvis helping the knee sliding forward the pelvis sliding forward to bring the arm up and then back down so again think arm coming back shoulder take the arm up begin to allow the arm to go behind you following with the head and eyes allowing the pelvis to slide back and see maybe you've turned a lot more you've got a bigger opening um, in the chest all because you allow something to release here here um, to assist the movement and in Feldenkrais we're always looking for the easy range of uh, uh, an easier way of doing things and then from here so again I'll follow the arm think of the shoulder the pelvis and then bringing their hands together. Great. So just again, take a rest for a moment. If you want to rest on the back, that's fine. I'm not going to, just um, again, for the purposes of the recording. Um, if you're ready to start again, then um, once more, let's take this a little bit further. So again, you begin to take the arm up towards the ceiling. You follow with the head and eyes. Careful not to drop the arm allowing the pelvis to move as necessary and take the arm behind you now once here and if your arms here above the back arms above the floor that's absolutely fine as long as it's not dropping back um, stay wherever you are and then see if you can turn the head and eyes keeping the arms open to look towards one hand and then towards the other hand so just turning the head and eyes to look to one hand and then towards the other hand and then this is a weird one <laughs> stay looking with your head and eyes towards the back hand back hand so you keep the nose looking at the back hand and then see if you can move the eyes left and right keeping the head looking to the back hand you won't see very much of, uh, of me doing it but um, it's interesting to notice, just need to move the pads, um, as you can you differentiate the eye movements from the head. So you, you stay looking back, can you move the eyes on their horizon a little bit left and a little bit right? And you may feel each time there with the eye movements back towards the the for me it's the right hand, how something sort of releases in the in the chest and the shoulders. Once you've done that a few times, then look again at the back hand and then come all the way back up and then bring the hands back together. And then once more follow with the head and eyes, think of the move to the shoulder, letting the pelvis move back if necessary to take the hand wide and then reach back up and then bring the hands back together. So I, I like to do this so I breathe in as I take the arm up, breathe out as I take the hand back and then an easy breath in as I come back up and then breathe out as I bring the hands back together again. But you may want to do it with a different breath pattern, that's absolutely fine. The important thing is just to notice what, what, you're, what you are doing. So once you've done that, come on to the back for a rest. Um, a rest, sort of half-time rest. And just notice, uh, uh, again, just how you're lying and whether you sense anything uh, different to when we started. So I suddenly, I feel um, how my collarbone, this area here, is sort of spread out into the floor a little bit more. It's very weird, I feel a bit longer on my right hand side than my left hand side. And if you roll the head and eyes a little bit left and a little bit right again, just notice, has anything changed in terms of your sense of the ease of the movement of roll, the rolling of the head? 
Good. So, and once you've done that, um, if you are ready to proceed to the other side, then please come and do the um, other side. Um, I'm going to um, turn so that my head is the other end of the mat, just so that you can see what I'm, I'm doing. And so I can see the camera as well. So, um, again, support the head if you need to. Uh, just so the head is comfortable and then um, bring your top hand onto the bottom one and it we won't necessarily need to go through the steps identically as on the other other side but um, so have the top um, uh, left hand on top of the right and then begin to slide the arm a little bit forward and you can go straight to taking it back as well just gently sliding it forwards and backwards and again just notice are you fixing the head and eyes um, if you were to allow the head and eyes to roll it would be much better if I was to do this without my glasses on but I can't see the camera without them because um, it's interfering with the rolling of my head but um, uh, just sliding the arm a little bit forward and backwards. And again, notice um, what's happening. Are you doing this just from moving the chest and there's no movement of the shoulder blade relative to the, um, the chest uh, like that? Or are you keeping the chest still and finding, ah, oh, actually my shoulder blade moves relative I can feel movement to my shoulder blade. I can feel it gliding away from the spine as it come, the arm comes forward and coming back towards the spine as the arm comes back. And then I'm, I can think of letting this go a little bit further. So I think first I let the shoulder blade come f away from the spine. Then I can involve my chest a little bit more. I can come back in think shoulder, allowing the chest to turn and the head and eyes too. Just again going forward and backwards and then pause and then think of just bringing the arm backwards slightly so you feel it's like a counterweight, the shoulder, the scapula just can drop back a little bit towards the spine and that sense of the weight coming back into the spine makes the arm very light as you take the arm up towards the ceiling. Again, just following with the head and eyes check it, you're still sort of um, holding the baby's, <laughs> baby's hand, the hand is nice and soft. So just turning, taking the arm up, feeling now how more of the ribs and the chest are perhaps participating. Head and eyes just easily following. And once you've got a sense of that, then bring the top hand onto the forehead, fingers pointing towards the crown of the head if possible, and look towards the crook of the elbow and then begin to turn the complex, the, the arm, the head, together. Now what sometimes happens here is in fact if you look closely is people lift the elbow and I'm not doing that, I'm keeping that, that's nice, this area nice and soft so I'm not lifting from the arm muscles or the, I'm thinking of the head, the arm turns so that really it's that movement of the shoulder blade going around the axis of the spine, the spine, as you come forward and back, forward and back. And again, just check you're not tensing in the jaw, you're just looking for the easy range of motion. You may find you go further on this side because of the work that we've done on the other side. And then um, once you've done that, pause and do the next movement. And you just see, can you take the arm and just draw it back, keeping it nice and soft. Can you begin to think of turning from the shoulder, the shoulder moving back to take the arm up and maybe a little bit beyond. And then again, just notice as you begin to develop this movement, what happens with the pelvis. Are you keeping it, keeping the back sort of locked 
are you allowing that area to be soft and then pause and just to sort of help free up the lower back area just think of sliding the top knee forward and backwards just forward and backwards feeling how this movement again keeping the um, comes from the pelvis, careful to keep the feet together if possible, so you're not sort of doing this or that's it, just keeping the leg as quiet as possible, the leg muscles sort of uh, resting as much as possible, feeling how you're differentiating the movement of the pelvis from the chest. Good. And then begin to slide the arm and the knee forward and the arm and the knee back. And just letting the head roll if possible, checking you're not clenching the jaw. And then pause and then see if you can do the, um, the other movement. So there's the knee goes back, the arm comes forward. As the arm comes back, the knee goes forward. And you're just alternating between these two possibilities. Checking again as you do this that you're just there's nothing about it to cause you to want to hold the breath, you're still able to maintain a nice easy breathing rate. If you find yourself suddenly losing where you are, then stop, pause, take a moment, and then start again to see if you can alternate the movement of the shoulder, the arm rather, and the and the knee, letting the head just do what it wants to. Does the head move with the knee or does it move with the arm? And then you can try whatever you were doing. So for me the head is moving with the arm as opposed to the knee. Can I? Can you try and do it so that the head moves with the knee as opposed to with the shoulder? I love these kind of movements, these Feldenkrais movements, because they really make you have to think. Um, and of course when you're having to think about the movement it really means your brain is trying to work out a solution a solution and when it does that it begins to let go of many of the holding patterns that we all have in our day-to-day -day life um, so um, once you've done that a few times pause and then begin to again think drawing the top arm back taking the arm up towards the ceiling following with the head and eyes Think of how the shoulder, the chest can turn. Now, I can feel, ah, oh, if I was to go further, it would be a strain in my back. But if I was to let the knee slide back, then it, it's much easier for me to pour the weight more towards my back. So I'm always looking to see, ah, oh, can I just let go or allow something to be part of the movement that maybe isn't part of the movement to see, does that help me to go a bit further. Such a lovely movement this to do. Feeling a lot of movement in the spine. Good. And then the next time you take your arm up and back just to where you can comfortably take it. I'm only turning that head this way to look at the camera. And then um, uh, you may need to slide the pillows a little bit back so you haven't got an edge to roll off. And then stay wherever you're open. It might be here, um, it might be here, it might be here. Whatever's where you can hold the position comfortably uh, without it causing you to hold the breath. And then just see if you can roll the head and eyes to look towards one hand and then the other. Each time I look towards the backhand, I can feel that arm sliding a little bit further away from me. The chest, the pectoral muscles here, all this area, um, releasing. And then stay with the head looking at the backhand and see if you can just move the eyes left and right separately. So you stay with the head and the eyes just move left and right. Once you've done that a few times, then lengthen the arm up towards the ceiling and then bring the hands back together and then just for the sheer pleasure of the movement again just see what it's like like everything to be part of this and then you can always stay here and just breathe 
Feel the movement into the ribs and the tummy. And then to come out, you bring the arm back up, following with the head and eyes, and then bring the hands back together again. Okay, and um, I just show you a few few of these movements. Um, you know, uh, if you want to do more, then please feel free to do so. Um, uh, as many as you like, really, if you're, particularly if you're getting pleasure out, out of them. Always letting the guide be. Is it comfortable? Um, are you doing things within an easy range of motion? So, once you've done that, come back to resting on the back. Again, just notice how you're feeling. How's the contact now? Uh, how the legs resting, the pelvis, I can feel my right side is a little bit more down into the mat now, shoulders feel very chilled, it's like I'm melting into the floor, and what's it like to roll there, head and eyes. Oh, well, I could stay here all day actually, because it feels nice and warm, but when you're ready, bend the knees, roll to the side, and when you're ready, um, come up to standing to see how that all felt. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson as much as I did um, teaching it. Um, if you have any comments at all, please leave them in the box below. If you like the video or if you like the lesson, then please hit the like button. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my Feldenkrais Moments channel um, to keep up to date with all the lessons as they come out.